Amen. A merry heart doth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Amen. With the help of the Holy Ghost tonight, I'd like to preach upon that thought for a moment or two upon the subject of a merry heart. Amen. A merry heart. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you once again in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity once again to declare your word to these wonderful people. God, I ask you tonight, God, that the Holy Spirit would fall in this house. Touch your people here tonight. Encourage them. Lift them up, I pray. In the name of Jesus, and Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, and the church said, and amen. Praise the Lord. A merry heart doth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Amen. How many of you in here tonight, you're here with a merry heart? Amen. You're here filled with the joy of the Lord. A merry heart is simply a rejoicing heart. People who serve God ought to be a people of rejoicing. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 92, verse number 4, For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. Praise God. You know, Jesus Christ made me glad and has given me a heart that is over flooding, over running with his presence. And I thank the Lord every day for it. When I get out of bed many of times, the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to my heart and he'll say, Son, come on, it's time to get into the prayer closet. I want to talk to you. Oh, what a precious time it is to be able to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with God. Amen. You know, there are tremendous health benefits to those that have a merry heart. Amen. Medical studies have proven that those who have a more positive outlook in life are generally more healthy than people that are negative. Amen. Physicians have said that positive people have less stress than negative people. <laughs> no doubt about that. Positive people get better sleep at night. How do I fall asleep at 8 o'clock? Amen. Positive. Amen. Think myself happy. Amen. Positive people are less likely to develop bodily illnesses, studies say. But I don't need a scientific study to prove to me that a merry heart doth good like a medicine. Solomon said many, many years ago that a merry heart doth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth up the bones. Amen. Oh, somebody told Miranda after she had told them that she was pregnant, they said to Miranda, you need to get ready for the worst nine months of your life. Amen. Oh, how encouraging is that to hear? Oh, Miranda has told me many times, yes, there's sometimes I've got to help get her out of bed. She starts snoring a lot now since she's been pregnant. I'll wake her up saying, shut up. I'm trying to sleep, woman. Oh, but she'll have to get help out of bed. But all throughout the day, yeah, she sleeps a little bit more than, a lot more than she used to. But overall, I don't hear her whining. I don't hear her complaining. She's not saying, oh, how terrible this is. Oh, why? Because she's chosen to go through this pregnancy with a merry heart. Amen. With a positive outlook. Saying, God, thank you for this child. I will rejoice. I will be glad in the blessings that you have done in my family and in my life. A merry heart does good. Like a medicine. Many a time, I'll tell you, church, I really do not believe, according to Scripture, that any child of God ought to be on any such thing as an antidepressant as any type of thing to try to keep your mind under control. If that's the case, you need to be delivered. Your mind needs to be touched by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, many a time we don't need a pill. We don't need a bottle. All we need is a merry heart. It 
A broken spirit, amen, drieth the bones, amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, there are some times we will walk through times of difficulty as a Christian, as a pastor. It isn't always going to be a bed of roses, but many a time the way we look at the situation will determine our uh, the, the things that go on in that situation. I told Miranda a few weeks ago, I was discouraged about a little thing that happened uh, just unto me. And I told Miranda, I just began to complain to her. This is wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, and that is wrong. What else can I do? What more can I do, honey? Oh, but then I said, but you know what, honey? Look what God has done. God's done this, God's done that, God's done that, God's done that. Oh, my goodness. He's been too good to me for me to start complaining. And you know what happened? That burden that was on my shoulder, God lifted it up. And he said, son, I've got everything under control. What was it that got me that play? It wasn't a pill. It wasn't from seeing Dr. Dingley. It wasn't from seeing a shrink or a psychiatrist. It came from rejoicing in the Lord only. And again, I say rejoice. It came on thinking upon good part. Get the negative out. Let the positive thoughts of God fill this heart and fill this mind. A merry heart to good like a medicine. Amen. A merry heart. A merry heart. Amen. You know, Satan will do everything within his power to break your spirit. Yes, he will. He will do everything within his power and his ability to break your spirit and to leave you spiritually dead and spiritually dry. Amen. Oh, but God has equipped you with an antidote from drying up spiritually and dying. That antidote is found within a merry heart. Amen. It's found with rejoicing in the Lord. Yes, everything ain't going to be picture perfect. There's some things you figure need improvement. There's some things you wish did never happen. But God said, I ain't calling you to dwell on that. I'm calling you to think in the heaven. I'm calling you to think on the things of God. A merry heart. The good like a medicine. Amen. A merry heart doth good like a medicine. There's this toy on we passed out some uh, little toys from the dollar store. Not everything's a dollar there anymore <laughs> at the 99 cent store. Some of the toys for $5.99. Amen. Still cheaper than you go to Walmart, you know. So the church we went, we got these the kids in the community. It's amazing how many kids start showing up. Hey, man, we're giving something away for free. Hey, man. I had teenagers coming that I only see once a year. Oh, but they were there. Hey, man. Oh my goodness, here I am and I get Michaela one of these little one of these little toys for her present and it's this little stuffed animal where you squeeze it and all of a sudden it starts laughing. You know what I'm talking about, Sister Diane? I think Addison got one of those. Yeah. Those are very annoying, aren't they? <laughs> well, they took the little noise thing out of the stuffed animal and it was just sitting in Michaela's room. I was doing some cleaning and you know what I started hearing? <laughs> I started hearing that little laughing thing. I picked that thing up. I threw it in the trash can. You know what it started doing? <laughs> I got it. I threw it over my back like I'm Santa Claus, taking the trash out. The whole time I'm walking, it's bumping. It's going ha 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 ha. Yeah, I went into that room, ticked off with that little thing. But the time I threw it in the trash can, I said, "Thank you, Lord, for this joy that this little toy has given me." You see, brothers and sisters. That merry heart begins to run. Oh, and all of a sudden, the doubt begins to run. The fear, the anxiety, it has to flee. Why? Because a merry heart was the proper antidote for such a thing. A merry heart of good. 
like a medicine. Number one tonight, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. 2 Corinthians just 11. I got a merry heart tonight. I said I got a merry heart tonight. Amen. A merry heart, number one tonight. A merry heart has the power. Say the power. To overcome. Amen. A merry heart has the power. To overcome. Amen. Oh, if anybody ever had a reason for a broken spirit, for a dried up spirit, it would have to be the Apostle Paul. Amen. If anybody ever had a reason to complain, it was the Apostle Paul. Amen. After Paul's conversion, Jesus told him, Come on, I'm going to show you those things that you must suffer. Amen. After Paul's conversion, he found out personally what it was to suffer with Christ. Amen. 2 Corinthians 11 tells uh, that Paul was scored five different times. Paul was beaten with rod three different times. He said, I've been hungry. I've been thirsty. I've been cold. I've been naked. I've been shipwrecked. But yet Paul's merry heart. It allowed him to overcome every obstacle that Satan tried to throw his way. Paul had spent a total of five and a half ministry years of his life. <coughs> Paul had spent a total of five and a half years of his life in prison for simply preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't you ever let anybody tell you serving God is always going to be easy. They say you that, they tell you that, you go ahead and you tell them a liar. Amen. That's exactly what they are. It ain't always going to be easy. But let me tell you, church, it'll be worth it. I said it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it when you wake up in a line call It'll be worth it when you're walking on streets of God. It'll be worth it when you see Jesus face to face. It'll be worth it when you get your cry out and you cast it at his feet. It will be worth it. Amen. It'll be worth it. Yeah. He had a lot of hardships. He had a lot of suffering. But a merry heart did him good like a medicine. Amen. While in prison, the Apostle Paul wrote Philippians chapter number four and verse number four. Hallelujah. While in prison, I said Paul wrote Philippians four and verse number four. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say Rejoice, amen. I don't know if the Apostle Paul was sitting in the corner of a dungeon when he wrote that. I don't know if he had bugs and rats crawling all around him, but something, I said something about having that very heart and allowed him to be able to ride to that church in Philippi. You better rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Yeah, I may be in prison, but it don't get compared to the glory. That is set before me. We've got to learn to rejoice. Amen. Rejoice and to live that life, live this life with a merry heart. Amen. He went on. I imagine when he's sitting in that jail cell, writing Philippians chapter 4, he was having a Holy Ghost shouting meeting. Amen. Yes, he was. Amen. Him, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. While in prison, Paul also wrote Philippians 4, verse number 8. Finally, brethren, not talking to sinners, he's talking to you and not, talking to the brethren, talking to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest. If the devil tells me something, I don't receive it, Sister Marlene, because he's a liar. Amen. 
whatsoever things are on us. Sister Lena, I don't repeat, I don't believe the report of the devil. He's a liar. He's the father of all lies. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely. I like this. Whatsoever things are of a good report. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Paul was saying your circumstances, your star, and your trial don't have to dictate the direction in which your life is going. God's given you and I a merry heart and it does good like a medicine. It was a merry heart that caused Paul to overcome in the worst of conditions, amen. Even in prison, Paul purposed, I will live this life with a merry heart. I will rejoice in the Lord always, amen. I will be glad. I will not whine. I will not pout, but I'm going to shout, amen. I won't pout, but I'm going to shout, amen. I ain't going to whine, but I'm going to die in the presence of Almighty God. I'm just starting to rhyme now, amen. Oh, you see, brothers and sisters, but what Paul was saying, I ain't going to let this temporary play dictate my happiness, dictate my joy. My joy isn't of this world. I like that old song that says this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. I didn't get my joy from North Baker and Bernard. I didn't get my joy even from my wife. I don't get my joy from you. I get my joy from the King of Kings, from the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus. That's where my joy is. It's where it flows from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 15, 15. All the days of the afflicted are evil. All the days of the afflicted are evil. Listen to this. But he that is of a merry heart, hallelujah, hath a continual feast, amen. A continual feast, amen. Oh, he that has a merry heart has a continual a continual feast, amen. A merry heart will cause you to feast no matter where you are. In sickness, you can feast at the table of the Lord. In times of death and sorrow and pain, you can feast in the presence of the Lord. In times of trial, there is a table set for you and I, and we can partake of it. All we've got to do to partake of it is simply live out this life with a merry heart. Think on good things. Think on good thoughts. Amen. And know all together in the end. It's God that's in control. It's God that's leading me. It's God that's guiding me. What fear should you have of man? What they can do to you. Don't fear man. But you begin to rejoice. You begin to praise God. You begin to worship Him. A merry heart does good like a medicine. A merry heart. Let me tell you. I was at Walmart today. I didn't see any medicine for a merry heart. Amen. I saw medicine for heartburn. Saw medicine for bloating and gas. Amen. It's all medicine for a headache, but nothing for a merry heart. <laughs> only Jesus said, only Jesus 
can give that person all oh, that is depressed that it give that person that is lonely that will give that person that is heartbroken and feeling like they ain't worth anything only Jesus Christ can give that person a merry heart thank God that a merry heart is one of the benefits that come from serving God amen I said a merry heart is a benefit from those that serve the Lord amen Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart doth good like a medicine. Praise God. Number two tonight, a merry heart is contagious. Amen. Cough at your neighbor and say, I'm contagious. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> don't do that. Amen. It'll be hard to get people on Sunday, let alone Sunday night loud now, so don't you be coughing on each other. <laughs> you know, we were on our way here tonight, and I told Miranda, I said, I said, baby, it's been a while since I've had to go to this hospital. Amen. But every time I say that, yeah. I get a call that week, somebody in the hospital. <laughs> Amen. But oh, you see, brothers and sisters, a merry heart. It's contagious. Amen. A merry heart is contagious. Amen. Nathan, you're looking like you're bored. All right. Get your hands down. Listen to daddy. Amen. A merry heart. It is contagious. Amen. A merry heart. It is contagious. Psalm 96 verse number six says it. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. One reason why we are not to forsake the assemblings of ourselves together is because a merry heart. It is contagious. Amen. I'll tell you it was contagious just tonight when brother Steve came in here and he said I'm thankful to be in the house of God I'm going to enter his courts with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praying, what was it it was something that had him and it got a hold of me I said to myself thank you Jesus for yet one more time to declare the gospel I'll tell you church a merry heart is contagious Sister Marlene, occasionally she'll give me an, a little note. One time she gave me a note. I said, uh-oh, is this a dear John? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. But occasionally she'll give me a note. And I never read it right there. <laughs> Sister Marlene. Here's some of them right here. I keep them in my wallet. Amen. For times of discouragement. Hope you're kind of turning red, sis. Amen. Hope I ain't embarrassing you. Now I really am. Oh, but you see, brothers and sister, a while back, she had written me a note. Said, Pastor, this is for you and for your wife. I said, thank you, sis. I put it in my uh, jacket, I believe, and I went home that afternoon. I, 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 after church that morning, it was just a struggle. Sometimes after church, you may not realize it, but as a pastor, you think, Lord, I thought it would have gone this way. I thought it would have gone that way. Many times, I, I, that's a habit of mine, and it is not a good habit. You start looking for this to happen, looking for that result. God said, quit looking for result. That stuff is my business. Your job is simply to preach the word of God. Leave the rest of it to me. Some get upset, let them get upset. Some rejoice, rejoice with them. Amen. Oh, but brothers and sisters, I remember I got home. It was a rough morning. I felt all defeated when I got home. But when I got home and I saw the little note of encouragement from my sister Marlene, it began to lift me up. And it gave me a merry heart. And I was able to come back that night and preach a great message with the help of the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you what it was. It was a merry heart within her that was contagious. And when it got a hold of me, it caught me and then it brought other people I'll tell you we've got to learn to have this very heart it'll do you good like a medicine yes, it does. a merry heart does good like a medicine oh sister Lena came over yesterday dropped off some Jesus candy canes 
for the kids. Amen. Oh, what did it do? It gave them a merry heart. Why? Because a merry heart, it is contagious. Amen. <coughs> a merry heart doth good like a medicine. A merry heart is contagious. In John chapter number four, you don't have to turn there. But in John chapter 4, we read of the Samaritan woman at the well. After Jesus began to speak with her, she left the presence of Jesus and went back to the Samaritan people. Said, come see a man which told me all things, whatever I did. Praise God, this is the Messiah. I said, this is the Messiah. This is the one we've been longing for. This is the one that we have been waiting for. Oh, what happened unto her is when she had an encounter with Jesus, it produced a merry heart within her. And wherever she went with that merry heart, it was contagious unto those people. Why do you think all those Samaritan people went through a great revival and many souls were saved? It was because there was one Samaritan woman that had a merry heart after she'd been with Jesus and it had a lasting, contagious affair. May you and I become contagious tonight with a merry heart that other people see us and they say, I want to serve the Lord that you serve. Can you tell me about your Jesus? Oh, because you were contagious. Amen. Contagious. Praise God. When going through a dry in a difficult place, one of the best things you can do is get around somebody with a merry heart. Amen. When you're going through a dry and hard, tough time, you find somebody with a merry heart. Take you back. One time, I was stressing about something. I don't want you to think that all I do as a pastor is stress and worry. I've got two years of ministry under my belt now. Amen. First year, no complaints, no problems. Everything's easy. Second year, amen. <laughs> Dad wasn't as crazy as I thought he was. Amen. <laughs> amen. Here I am. I'm working at the church. Miranda's with me. I think we dropped the kids off at mom and dad's house. And we, we were painting. I think we were painting the lady. We were. We were painting the ladies' bathroom that bright blue color. Amen. Here I am, I'm painting it, and I'm talking to Miranda, and I'm saying, oh, babe, how are we ever going to get over this giant that we were facing at that time? And we just didn't know. We didn't know. We said, Lord, we're just trusting in you. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm painting, and all of a sudden I hear it. In the back door. And it kind of starts with me up. The world was, was here in the back. They go to the front. I said, because I wanted to sound like I was real tough. I said, Who is it? <laughs> There's a little kid in the community. <laughs> it's us, Pastor. Let us in. <laughs> oh, I was just having just a time where I'm just kind of stressed out. Saying, so Lord, would you help me? I need your help with it. All of a sudden, there's about ten little kids walk right on into the church in the fellowship hall. They said, Pastor, what are you doing? I said, I'm painting this back. Let me help paint my beautiful little girl. She went over, grabbed herself a paint rug, dipped it in that blue paint, started walking. It's dripping all over the carpet. It's dripping all over the floor. I said, baby, come back here. We got to clean that off. But when they left, I began to cry. Tears were coming out of my face. I said, Lord, thank you for sending water. Thank you for sending a glass of cold water on a hot day. Thank you, Lord, for sending some encouragement when you knew I needed. Thank you, Lord. A merry heart does good like a minister. Yes. <laughs> when they leave, they say, oh, pastor, I love you. Oh, talking about a merry heart tonight. A merry heart does good. Like a medicine, praise God. A 
merry heart. In closing tonight, a merry heart is a heart of praise. Caden, sit down. Amen. A merry heart is a heart of praise. Say, Pastor, it's real hard for me to praise God. I'll tell you what you lack. I'm not being ugly, not being mean. You lack a merry heart. And because of that, you're drying up. Your bones are drying up. <laughs> a merry heart does good like a menace. But broken spirit dries up the bones. Amen. How do you get to a place with a broken spirit? Oh, you get to a place when you refuse to be thankful. It's when you get to a place you refuse to be content. It's a time when you get to a place when you refuse to pray, you refuse to worship, you refuse to be thankful even about the little things. Hey, Pat, oh, but what do you got to do if you get in that state? You've got to begin to rejoice. You've got to begin to say, Lord, I may not feel like praising you, but I'm going to throw my hands up and say, I love you, Jesus. I may not feel the great but I'm going to worship you. I may not feel like it. I may not think the conditions are just right. If you're waiting for the conditions to get right, to praise the Lord, you're going to sit there and dry up and die. Sometime you've got to give him a sacrifice of praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. A merry heart is a heart of praise. If you want a merry heart, one way to get it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll turn the Happy Goodman song. Kayla doesn't know the difference between turn it up and turn it down. I'm always telling her to turn her tablet down because she plays with a full glass. Well, I've turned the Happy Goodman's on. Wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. You know, it starts out with that fiddle and the violin playing. Kayla said, Daddy, turn it down. I'll turn it down. She goes, no, turn it down. I go, so you mean up. Turn it down. I turn it up. Here she is, she's dancing, amen. Wouldn't take nothing from my journey now, amen. Oh, what is it that causes that little girl to dance? It's a merry heart, amen. When you begin to listen to songs that are anointed by the Holy Ghost, songs that'll give you joy, songs that'll give you comfort, songs that'll give you peace in the midst of the storm, it'll cause you to rejoice. I said it'll cause you to rejoice and to be glad. It'll give you a merry heart if you're saying to yourself, I'm having a problem praising the Lord. I'm having a problem rejoicing. What you need to do is allow the things of God to enter into your mind, into your heart. Let it saturate you. Worship Him. Praise Him. That very heart will come. Amen. And when it comes, it'll make that sickness leave. Amen. I believe that even being so negative, number one, it's sin. Come on. It's sin. When all you can do is focus on everything that's going wrong, you can't focus on nothing that's going right. It's sin. And God looks at you as an ungrateful baby that needs to grow up. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Anytime. When we allow our faith to get on our own abilities, get our, our faith on our own ability to handle something or to work something out, that is sin. Our faith has to be totally 100% in Christ and in Christ alone. Amen. A merry heart. A merry heart is a heart of praise. I'm almost done. But this will help us tonight if we'll grab hold of this. A merry heart. Psalm chapter 34. 
In Psalms chapter number 34, David had been sought out by King Saul. Saul was so jealous of what David did to Goliath. Remember how all the women in Israel were saying, well, Saul killed this, what was it? Saul killed his thousands and David killed his ten thousands and all Saul began to get very jealous, get very, very, very bitter. That's a big sin too, jealousy, yes. bitterness, amen. Well, God, why'd you bless this person? Why'd you bless them and not me? Jealousy, bitterness. Well, listen, Psalm 34, David is being chased by Saul. You would think that surely David had nothing to praise the Lord about. You would think that David had no reason to rejoice. Psalm 34 and 1 says this, I will say that. I will bless the Lord sometimes. Uh-oh, I must be in an NIV Bible. <laughs> I'll bless the Lord. Not sometimes, not most of the time, at all times. Amen. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, whenever David de defeated Goliath, he blessed the Lord, amen. When he defeated the Philistine, he blessed the Lord. When he was being even pursued by Saul and a death warrant is put it out over David's head, he blessed the Lord. What could cause somebody in that state to do such a thing? It was a merry heart. David realized I don't gotta go crazy I don't gotta you lose my mind a merry heart will do me good like a medicine amen a merry heart is a heart of praise hallelujah a merry heart does good like a medicine but a broken spirit drieth up the bones. We've got a choice. We've got a choice to either live this Christian life with a merry heart, with a rejoicing heart, or to sit down and complain about everything that we don't like, or everything that's just not perfect in our life. And when you get to that place, it's a slippery slope. You end up dry, dead, withered. Only hope for a person like that is for God to breathe life upon them once again. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord tonight? Yes, amen. I want this very heart. We all do, don't we? Let me tell you, Satan will do everything he can to try to disrupt that merry heart. How many times was Paul beat with rods? Was it three times? <laughs> he was stoned, left for dead, shipwrecked. And you got these TV preachers saying that if you give me $10,000, nothing bad will ever happen to you. Oh, a bunch of stupid people. Hey, man. <laughs> oh, but a merry heart will do us good like a medicine. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Honey, bring Josiah over here, okay? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You've heard enough of the word tonight. <laughs> a merry heart so that a merry heart does good like a medicine I want everybody that can would you come please let's stand up here in the front tonight the Bible says a merry heart does good like a medicine a broken spirit drieth up the bones Josiah was doing so much better than he was earlier today we're here by faith tonight Amen.
Do you believe that by the bloody stripes that were upon the back of Jesus that our healing was paid for? Yes, it was paid in full. The bell has been written to. Let's enter in tonight. Hallelujah, honey. Would you play at the piano? I want you to just come. Let's gather around Joe. I want you to lay hands on him. Father, <coughs> we pray the prayer of faith right now in the name above all names in the name of Jesus.